What is going on today, everybody? It's Buddy. And in this video, we're going to be doing a fun little project here. We're going to be turning this real stock looking instrument cluster in this BMW into a real modern looking digital display cluster. You know how my videos are. We're not going to waste any time with small talk. Let's jump right into the video. Now, the particular vehicle we're doing this upgrade on is a BMW E70, which just is an older X5 BMW series. Now, these digital dash clusters are available here on your 5 Series BMWs, your 3 Series BMWs, and I'm going to leave a list here and in the description for all the vehicles that this dash can support. Now, looking at everything straight out of the box, this is obviously going to be our unit. Here is going to be our cover for our new unit. This is going to be the wiring harness that connects your old harness to your new unit. Now over here, they give you this nice little flat touch pad. I don't think this is included with the kit. You'd have to buy this separately. This is obviously the wiring harness for this. Now there is a USB port behind this unit, but what they have is they have an extender you can get as well. And it comes here with a cool little USB flash drive. So this extender, you can hook it up if you ever want to update it or you want to add more skins. Comes with a little bit of hardware, of course. And then coming up here, this is going to be the reverse camera setup. Now you can see it's fully integrated. They do not go cheap. They give you a full-on trunk release hatch and a camera installed in it. This is all your wiring. Obviously, you're going to run that all the way up into your unit. And I just got this, for example, to show you kind of like what most companies have is just cheap little cameras that you put on the back. This one is fully integrated, so you know they did not go cheap with this. So that's a nice little addition. So let's go outside and let's hook this thing up. So the very first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to get the steering wheel as far out of the way as we can. So we're gonna move it all the way down and then we're gonna move it all the way out. That way it's gonna give us the most possible room to pull this old instrument cluster out and put the new one in. Now after we got the wheel all the way out, we're gonna have two T20 screws that are going to need to be removed. So we're gonna pull these guys out. So now we can go ahead and we can work our instrument cluster out. And just a little bit of wiggling, and it is all the way out. So now it's time to go to the back of the vehicle. We're going to lift up our trunk hatch. We're going to pop this little thing down here. And then we're going to go right here under this floorboard and get to the battery. Now with the battery, we're going to remove the negative terminal. Now anytime you're messing with any electrical components, it's always a good practice to remove the negative terminal off your battery. Make sure you don't shorten it now. So now that we got the battery disconnected, this is the back of the instrument cluster. I just turned it around so you guys can see it better. We're going to press this little tab down, slide right here, this little locking mechanism, and that's going to pull out our wiring harness. So now that we got the old cluster out and removed, we're going to start working here on our digital cluster. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take off this little protective screen wrap right here, and then I'm going to place the cover on. So the cover is held on by two little bolts here, two little bolts here, and then two bolts right here on this side as well. It doesn't have two bolts on the bottom. That way you don't mess it up and you don't actually install it upside down. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install our nuts here on one side. And then we're gonna do it here on the other side as well. And then last but not least, here on the back side. And after we got everything hand tightened, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna press it down, make sure everything sits flush here on the unit. And then we're gonna take a little nut driver and we're gonna drive them all in. All right, so we're back in the vehicle, and what I did off camera is I just attached this vent, it's just one screw right here, and I just popped off a few of these trim pieces here with this little plastic pry tool, and I just squeezed this little flat instrument cluster control thing right here on the side. This is just temporary, I'm gonna find it a cleaner spot, but for now, this'll do. Now, quick note, you can control everything through this, just like you control your dash now, but honestly, when you have this little button pad, it makes life so much easier and navigation's way smoother. So now that I got all that trim pop back in, now it is time to fit our instrument cluster in. Now on some three series models, I know you actually have to take a tool and maybe cut the air duct out a little bit to make a little bit more room. But on the five series and here on these SUVs, you do not need to do any cutting. Now in order for this thing to fit, since it's slightly larger than the stock instrument cluster, you have to shave down one corner, two corners, three corners here, and then four corner down here. Now when you shave or cut, you wanna make sure that you don't go past this little black piece of leather. So this outer layer of leather, you wanna make sure that's still intact. So if you ever put your old instrument cluster in, it's gonna cover it up. The pretty much area you wanna focus on here is these two inner layers, this hard layer right back here, and then this softer layer here in the middle. So now once we got everything nice and shaved down, we're going to take our adapter here and we're gonna plug it into our factory wiring harness. Pull this little lever back and that's gonna lock it up in place. Then we can go ahead and we just tuck that back as far as we can. Now we're gonna take our unit, 
get it nice and positioned. We'll hook up our button control harness and then we'll hook up our main wiring harness to hear the click. Push everything back as far as we can. Let's see if we can slide this bad boy in. Look at that. And then we can go in and we can put in our last two screws to hold in our instrument cover. Let's tighten these down. So now that we got everything plugged back in and everything hooked up, we can go ahead and reconnect our battery. All right, guys, so we got the gauge installed. I waited till nighttime because it was a slight glare. So let's start up the engine. And it says, good evening. So first of all, I want to mention, yes, there is a check engine light on now and the car is misfiring. That's why you see those jumps in the RPMs. But nonetheless, we're going to get this review done. So right when you turn it on, it gives you this nice classic white look. It's super clean looking. In my opinion, it looks way better than the orange already. So this one came with a bunch of skins already downloaded on it. So let's go over some of the themes here. The classic analog, got the classic carbon, kind of gives you that carbon fiber look. With classic pristine. Now here's just a modern analog. It's just all black all the way around. Modern carbon, you can't really tell too much. You just see there's a little bit of carbon fiber here in the dials now. Modern pristine, just another white. Classic blue, which is pretty cool looking, kind of looks futuristic. Classic green, just change it up to green. Classic orange, that way it'll kind of match all the ambient lighting in your car. As you know, these BMWs do come with that orange glow. We got the classic white, which just turns into white. Modern blue, which is a little bit of different style here. Modern green, of course, the modern orange. And then we got these, these are what I really like. Bright Austin, this one kind of turns into kind of like a light blue. And then the blaze color, which is super cool. The devil, which is a nice deep red. The green, this is like a nice bright white. And then we have the fierce. So just kind of changed up the style a little bit. And of course you have the same colors here for each style. Now if you press one of the buttons here, I am using a little dial pad. I'm just pressing the right button. So that just changes our little gauges here at the bottom. So here we have the MPGs, you press it again, it's gonna give you your coolant temperature, you press again your oil temperature, press again your battery voltage. So you can kind of cycle through all those, see which one you want. Also on this little dial pad, if you press up, that's going to adjust the brightness automatically. So you can kind of adjust it. If maybe you don't like driving at night when this thing's super bright in your face, you can turn it down. Now there is a presetting as well. Go here to brightness. You can see auto brightness. You can have that on or off. As I cycle the headlights on and off, it's going to get a little dimmer when the headlights are on at night. And obviously it's gonna get a little brighter during the daytime when you have the sun glare. Now this thing has a really nice anti-glare coating as well. In the daytime, you cannot really even see a glare on it. It just looks super crisp. Obviously you're gonna have your trip meter. You're gonna have all the same features that are gonna be on your regular cluster. This one, you can switch up your indicators. So you can have the time and temperature, which is this middle cluster here. And then you can put the date. I mean, you can pretty much set it to whatever you want, the time. Now let's say if you do like this carbon look, but you do want some digital readout, you can also have your digital readout. I just changed it to green. You can pretty much change it to any color. And it is really responsive. You see right when the RPMs go up, the thing goes up with it. Now in the system menu here, now this thing does have a camera, just like I showed you. You can toggle whether you want your camera on or off. Maybe you already have a pre-installed backup camera and you don't want this one on as well. Device units, whether you want kilometers, miles per hour, Fahrenheit or Celsius, you can set all that good stuff. Also here in appearance, you can set whether you want the M Sport logo. So maybe you have an M6, M5, M3 or whatever the case. And you wanna show off that little M or if you just wanna up badge, you can have the little M badge there for you. Now, real quick thing here, it does have a race skin. So we'll switch to the race skin and that changes the whole thing up completely. Now, I believe this is an additional package, but this thing is super cool. It's, it's It looks like a video game almost. And this thing also has its own little menu here. You can change the appearance of it. You can make it lizard green, Persian green, you make it red, you make it pretty much whatever color you want. So let's pull this thing out on a little bit of drive so you guys can see what it looks like while we're driving. And yeah, you can see it's real responsive here with the RPMs. And here's how that blue looks. I honestly, I'm, I'm thinking the blue might be my favorite. Now here, I'm just gonna go over a montage of a couple of my favorite skins. I'm gonna leave a link in all the website information down in the description below. That's all I have for you guys, so I'll see you on the next video.